Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Oh, I'm Joel. I'm the teaching guy here. Honored to serve under our senior pastors, Marcus and Natalie Avalos, who just got back from the other side of the pond. So they, they went, took on a trip to Scotland. So yeah, Natalie will give herself a clap there. So they're a little jet lag. So if you hear snoring in the sec- in this service, it's... it's It's not because I'm boring, they're jet lagged. I'm just kidding. Uh, Hey, we're going to finish today. This is it, y'all. This is it. We're going to finish Philippians. All this summer, we've been doing Summer of Joy. We've been reading through the book of Philippians, and we are going to finish reading through that today. And um, it's kind of, I think it's going to be super encouraging. Before we jump into that, though, uh, you probably got handed one of these on your way in. If you did not, make sure you grab one. This is our full menu of small groups that we have available this fall. And we're starting up small groups very shortly. And I want to encourage you, listen, small groups are where it's at. If you come, if you're trying to get all the Jesus you need to make it through the the life by just showing up on a Sunday morning, it's not going to happen, right? There's only so much that can go down on a Sunday morning. But the power of what happens in in the body of Christ happens during the week as you're connected in community with other believers, this is super important, okay? So we have all sorts of ways that you can get connected with different groups. Um, you'll see through the way we've got it broken down. There's support groups. Maybe you're struggling with addiction and you're trying to beat that and you just go, man, I just don't know how you can do it. Listen, the, the, the data shows you need a group around you if you're going to beat that addiction. And these groups like uh, Celebrate Recovery are a great way to do that. Uh, Pastor Natalie has a, a group coming up for, for young moms. And Lord knows, man, being a young mom, that is hard work. Kids are hard. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Love our kids, but man, they hard. Uh, we're going to have all sorts of our, we have our static groups. We've got our men's groups. We've got uh, re-engage, which is for your marriage. If your marriage is struggling, listen, don't try and figure it out on your own. Get into re-engage. We got all sorts of people f- that have been through the same challenges you're going through. Some are going through them right now. It's a great place to connect. See, you're not alone. We've got groups based on the messages on Sunday. We got groups based on serving. You say, well, I want to do something. Well, we got a thing for you then. If you want to do something, we got you a way to get you involved. But, and then there's study groups, different groups. And oh, super excited to see Melissa Reynolds is leading a group here. All right. Yeah. Where's she at? She's, she's, she's out serving. All right. So <laughs> do not miss this. So the sign up booths are out at the gathering place on the way out. All you've got to do is just walk out there, Put your name on there and give us your phone number and we will hunt you down. You don't even have to think about it again, right? We will hunt you down and make sure you get involved in a small group. So don't miss that opportunity. Y'all ready to finish Philippians? All right. So 10 years ago, I, didn't, I just realized it this week. 10 years ago, I wrote a little book called Vision Map. And everybody told me it was too small of a book to get published. But miraculously, the book got picked up by a national publisher, like a, a very reputable one. And my book got published. And I was like, man... This was such a miracle, this book getting published, that I know God is with me in this. So I got excited about the potential for the book. Well, the book came out, and nobody wanted to buy it. (laughs) A year got by, and I got my sales report after a year, and I saw the numbers of books we had sold, and I was devastated. I'm like, this, in my mind, this is, I'm a failure. This is a total failure. So I called a friend of mine and told him about it, and I was like, man, I thought God was going to bless me. He's like, well... Why, you, need some, you need some insight. He's like, call this coach friend of mine who helps people with this stuff and, and do what he says. And I'm like, coach is really expensive coach. And I was like, what could a coach possibly know that I don't already know? I read a lot of books. At the time, I was reading like 100 books a, a year. And he's like, no, just do, do everything he says. And if it doesn't work, this business coach, if it doesn't work, just scrap it. So I called him up and I was like, all right, I'm, paying, I'm literally paying him like $1,000 an hour for this call. And he's, he said, here's what you need to do if you want to launch this ministry in this book. You need to do this, 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 and this. And I was like, uh, I can't do that. I, there's no way I can do that. And this is what he said. He said, listen, the only thing standing in your way right now is your mindset. It's right here. I said, that's ridiculous. What's standing in my way is I don't have any money. I don't know anybody. I don't have any resources. And he's like, nope. It's all right up here. And he said, you need to figure out what you believe about the world and we got to unpack what you believe that's wrong about the world. He said, take a couple weeks and write down what you think about the world. So I sat down and I wrote it down. And during that two weeks, I had this series of epiphanies. I had five realities come to me and they were kind of, they kind of hurt to admit, but I had some bad mindsets that were limiting me. And I actually wrote uh, the, I wrote the five of them in my new book. By the way, it's available in the back. My new book, uh, see how I did that? I snuck that into promotion there. But 
This is one of the truths I realized about myself. All right, this is point two out of five. I realized this. I am not special. And no one is going to discover how special I am and launch me to success. I had this thing. I'm like, well, I'm special. Like, really? Like, I mean, look at me. I'm special. But no, no, I'm not special. The cavalry is not coming to save me either. I have what I need right now to build what I need right now. Big success builds on small success, but I must build and stop waiting for some magic moment or person to launch me forward. God will honor work that starts small and builds slowly. I had to come to realize that everything I needed to do what God had called me to do, I already had, but I had to stop sitting around and complaining and feeling helpless, and I had to use what God had given me. Now, here's what I know about everybody in this room. Every one of you, you've got some area in your life right now that if we were honest and we talked about it, you'd say the same thing. I don't think I can do this. Some of you mothers, you've got kids running around and you love them and you love them to death. Sometimes the point that you wish you could love them to death. They're just driving you insane and you get so mad and frustrated with them and then you put them to bed and they're sleeping sweetly there and you're like, why did I get so mad today? And you feel like a horrible mother because you're like, I just... I can't, I don't think I can do this. How do these other mothers do this? They're baking sourdough bread and they have multi-level marketing businesses and then they're posting on Instagram and all their kids look like they've got clothes on and it's like, how do they do it? I don't think I can do this. If that's what being a mother requires, I don't think I've got what it takes. Some of you dads, man, you're super competent at work, but when you come home, you don't know what to do with the kids. So you're like, well, I think I'll just stay at work because these kids wear me out and I can't do it. You go, I don't think I can do this. Some of you right now, you're dealing with an addiction. And man, you just, it's so, the craving is so strong that you're going, I don't think I can, I don't think I can stay clean. I just don't think I can do this. And you're trying and you're trying and you're trying. It's not working. Others of you, you're dealing with the weight of grief or maybe it's a depression that's just been sitting over you and you're like, when am I going to feel happy and excited about life again? Like, I just can't get excited about anything. I, the world is a horrible place and I feel like a horrible person and I don't feel like there's any way it can get better. I, I don't think I can keep doing this. Others of you, it's a financial burden, a mountain that's just in front of you and you're going, I don't know how we're going to do this. There's no, I'm looking at the numbers and what's coming in and I just don't think there's any way that we can do this. Every one of us, we've got an area this morning that if we're honest, we're looking at it and going, I don't think I have what it takes. So this morning, I want to give you a pep talk. You remember back in high school when they would give it the pep rallies right before the big game? Paul, as he's finishing the book of Philippians, he gives this pep talk that is, I think, epic. It's it's an amazing message that he says, listen, guys, you can do this. And that's literally the title of my message today. You can do this. In fact, not only can you do this, I believe you were actually born for this moment in time to do this. And this is where Paul steps in. As he's closing out the book, he says this. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. Now, Paul, one of the frustrating things about Paul is he's very verbose. He uses a lot of words. I would have just said, thanks for thinking of me, y'all. But he had to use all this flowery language, right? And then he says, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And this is a famous verse. We use this all the time on inspirational posters. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And we show people dunking a basketball, and you're like, if I just believe enough, I can dunk a basketball. That's not what it means. What Paul is saying here is he's saying, guys, here's how you can be content in any situation. It's when you realize that no matter what your situation is, whether in your mind it's really bad or really good, God is going to give you the strength for your unique situation. Now, I talk to a lot of people that seem like they've hit rock bottom, a lot of people that have a lot of lack and a lot of need, and they're like, man, this is really encouraging for them. But here's the weird thing. I also work with a lot of people who have really done well in life. They've been very successful and the weight of their success is crushing them. In fact, the rap song is really true. Mo money, mo problems, right? Most of us think, man, if I just have more money, it could resolve all this. And I talk to people that have lots of money all the time, and they're like, dude, 
Life was so much simpler before all this stuff because they have just so much weight on their shoulders and so much responsibility. And many of them are business owners. And not only do they feel the weight of the, the business, but they're like, man, I got 40 families depending on me now. If I screw this up, 40 people are depending on me for income. And it's a heavy weight for these guys that have been very successful business owners oftentimes. And they feel it and, and they have to recognize too, all the strength you need is coming from God. And that's what Paul's main point is right here. God offers the strength I need in my unique situation. Whether you're a mother right now and you've got kids that you just don't think you've got what it takes to be a good mother, God offers you the strength. And the really crazy thing is, oftentimes, he, he allows situations into our life where we can't depend on our strength anymore. In fact, Paul, he had this situation in his own life. He was really familiar with this. Because at one point, we don't know what it was, but Paul talked about something that he had that was really bad. We don't know if it was like an addiction or a health issue or something, but he, he at one point, he said, man, it's so bad. It says, he says, I pleaded three times with the Lord, take it away from me. Some of y'all can relate to this because you got an addiction and you're just going, man, God, just please just take it away. Take the desire away from me. And you're looking at the guy over there who had the great, amazing testimony. He's like, and God just snapped his fingers and I didn't have the desire anymore. And you're like, what the, how come he got that? And I, I'm over here struggling. You know, this isn't fair. Well, listen, this is, what, this is what Paul's saying here. He said, man, I, I begged and I prayed and I prayed, but here's what God's response to him was. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. So Paul, this is his conclusion. Paul's a strong dude. He says, therefore, I'll boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest upon me. That's why for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness and in insults and in hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Now that sounds absurd, except once you've lived through it, and some of you guys have lived through it because you hit rock bottom, man, and you thought, I'll never recover from this. The divorce, after that divorce, you thought, hey, no way I'm coming back. There's no way I can rebuild and get back to what I had before. And yet right in the middle of your weakest moment, something rose up within you and you're like, there's something there. And people are going, how, how are you not crumbling? And you're like, I don't know. I got this strength that I don't know where it's coming from. That's God's strength coming through in your weakness. Some of you, man, after the financial failure, the disaster, you thought, I'll never get back to where I started from. I'll never be able to rebuild. And yet you felt something deep within you say, it's okay, I'm with you. And that's what he's talking about there. And the really crazy thing is oftentimes God will cause us to get to the end of ourselves because he wants us to stop trusting in ourselves. Sometimes the greatest act of faith is to actually give up. Now, I don't like that because I'm a fighter. I love to fight. I just naturally fight. I fight everything. And I think that there's nothing I can't beat if I don't just try harder or yell louder or push harder. But there are some times in life where I've come to the point where God's like, hey, you ready to give up now, son? And I'm like, all right, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. And that's when he goes, all right, now I can actually do something. And I'm all bloodied from trying to beat through the wall. And he's all like, all right. And, and maybe for the first time then, when you hit that rock bottom, you can actually go, man, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he's the one that'll make your path straight. God wants you to be strong, but he doesn't want you to be strong in something you drum up on your own. Because what you drum up on your own, you'll have to keep going on your own. He wants you to tap into a source of power that comes from him. And sometimes we have to come to the end of ourselves to realize that and go, I can't beat this. I can't do this. I'm done. I can't even, there's no way I can keep going. And then you just say, God, I'm giving up on myself and I'm trusting in you. And that's when he steps in. So Paul, he continues with this. He says, look, it was good for you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, remember there's a letter he's sending to him and he's thanking him. When I set out for Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Paul's like, man, thank you guys. I, I don't take for granted that you you gave to me to allow this ministry to go on. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. Now, this is interesting because uh, just a little side note. Uh, you know, a lot of pastors get a lot of heat because they're like, why are you always talking about money? Listen, any pastor that knows what they're talking about, the reason they're okay talking about money is not because they're greedy or want more of it. It's because they know that the way we look at money has a lot to do with how we look at God. If God is our provider and we're just giving, being stewards of what he's given us, 
When we give, it's actually opening up the doors of blessing for us. And again, this isn't some sort of like slot machine God that I'm talking about. It's just the nature of it. If you give, it will be given to you, pressed down, shaken together. Jesus said that himself. So Paul's saying, look, I don't really need your gift, but I'm glad you gave because it's actually opening a door of blessing to you. I've received full payment and have more than enough. I'm amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. So thanks for the money. Great. They're a fragrant offering and an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And this is what he says here. He says, and my God, he'll meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Now we're going to come back to that, but really quick, let's finish out the rest of the book. It says, to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet all God's people in Christ Jesus, the brothers and sisters. That's when another version says the saints, which we talked about in the very first message. You're already a saint. In God's eyes, you are a saint and you don't do good works to become a saint. You do good works because you already are a saint in God's eyes. All God's people here send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Hey, we made it through Philippians. Yay, good job. (laughs) Clearly you guys are thrilled. All right, (laughs) let's jump back to this though. Because he says, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And here's my other key point, and this is super important. You have what you need to do what you're called to do right now. You go, I don't feel like I have what I need. Paul's saying, my God will supply all of your needs. Everything you need is what you need to do what you're called to do right now. I work with a lot of business uh, entrepreneurs and guys trying to start businesses. And what, one of the biggest mistakes they make is I say, hey, let's figure out what your minimum viable product is. What is the minimum thing you need to do to get started? And what they think they need to get started is way more than they actually think they need to get started. And they'll say, well, I need an office and a storefront. I need this nice furniture. I'm like, why do you need all that? You could do this from meeting at a Starbucks. Well, I need to appear successful. I'm gonna, I tell them, listen, I can't tell you how many men I've met who appeared successful and were bankrupt three years later. And then I meet other people who started small and they were scrapping along with whatever they had and doing it as cheaply as they could, and, but as quality as they could with what they had, doing the best they could with what they had. And their business actually grew and they became successful. And then they were able to ex- afford that storefront and not go into debt to afford it. A lot of times we think we need more, but what happens is we start to compare somebody's final product to our beginning. We had some folks at our property uh, yesterday and they were just raving about how amazing this retreat center is that we've created. They were like, this is incredible. And I'm like, yeah, some days this place is heaven, some days it's my hell. Like it's been a lot of work building out this place because a few years ago, three years ago, we built this, we started building this place in Kerrville. It was raw land. And I was just stupid enough to think I knew what I was doing. Had I ever done anything like that before? No. But what do you, I mean, again, I'm special, right? (laughs) This thing nearly crushed me building this thing. But what's crazy is that you come out now and people see it and they go, wow, this is amazing. I want to start something like this. I'm like, dude, it took us a long time to get to this point and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears and work. And what happens a lot of times is we look at what what we think we need to get started and God's like, you don't need all that. You just need this to get started. So Jeremiah, our worship pastor, he's a great dude. I love him. And I'm so proud of him and his wife, Hillary. They have taken on a very big project by faith. They've actually bought land here in Seguin. It's raw land. They're trying to develop it. And he's in the same situation I was in. He doesn't doesn't have the resources or equipment, but he just knows he's supposed to do this and God's supposed to help him. And God's supposed to, God's going to come in and fill in, excuse me, what he can't do. So he's building out there. And he came to me the other day and he's like, dude, how did you do this? Like, I'm just asking God, like, provide what I need. And, and he's just, I just feel like I'm not getting anything. I'm like, bro, that's how it's going to go down. In my personal experience, this is how it goes down. It's like you take on something really big that you feel like God's called you to do and you feel completely inadequate and incapable and you don't have what you need, but you're doing it out of obedience. And then you, you're sitting there drowning in the ocean in the middle of the storm and you call out, God, help me. <laughs> and he throws you a pool noodle. And you're like, I'm drowning here, man, in the storm and the waves. I need more. And he's like, no, you got what you need, brother. And you're kicking. And he's like, I'm like, no, I need more. And he's like, no, actually, while you're doing all that kicking and flailing, you're getting stronger. And I need you to get stronger because I got something big on the horizon for you. And it's exceedingly abundantly far above all you could ever ask or think according to his power that's at work in you. But you need to get strong in the process. So you've got just enough of what you need to do what you're called to do. And there are going to be some times in your life, some of you I know you're fighting a hard battle, 
where you go, I just don't have what I need. I can't do this. And here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to take whatever God gave you, even if it's a pool noodle. Stand up straight. Put your shoulders back. Come on. Bring it. Bring it. I'm going to take you out. My pool noodle. And some of y'all are looking like, Joy, you look like an idiot standing there with a pool noodle. Like, yeah, David probably did too with a slingshot up against a giant. Peter probably did too when he jumped out the boat. (laughs) Yeah, I can walk on water. And he did for a while, and then he freaked out. You look like an idiot until everybody's going, how'd you do that? And you go, well, I took my pool noodle. (laughs) Did what I could. And then God did what I couldn't do. And that's how it always works. Jesus says this. He says, to whom much is given, much more will be given. And to those who don't have what what they have will be taken from them. You go, wait, what? What? Shouldn't it say to whom much is given, we'll take it from them and give it to the other people? No, that's socialism. That ain't Jesus. Jesus says, (laughs) if you take the little bit that I've given you and you trust my power and you do the best you can with it, he's going to take it and he's going to do way more than you can imagine. And and this is a really important point. Am I saying you just need to sit around and be content with what you got? No, I'm saying if you're in a difficult situation, you fight and you do your best with everything you've got to get better. But here's the thing. If you've done your best and you've tried your hardest and it's just not improving, you've got to believe that right now you've got everything you need for God to do what he wants to do in your life. You've got to believe it. And you go, but I, I need more. Nope. If you've tried your hardest and you've done your wisest, the best you can do, and you've sought counsel and it's just not getting better, but you're trying all you got, you got to believe there's something God's trying to teach you right in the middle of this. So take what he's given you and stand up against the waves and go, man, all right, I'm going to trust. I'm going to be content and trust that he's given me everything I need right now to accomplish everything that I need to do. And listen to me. You were born for this moment. Right now, this moment in time, God chose you to be on this earth in this moment in time. You go, yeah, but it's never been darker in this world. It's never been harder. Listen to me. You're not here by accident. You were born for this moment. And all those little things in you that you're like, ah, they're weird, quirky things. Maybe that's the thing God gave you. And you just need to leverage that and trust. I'm going to do the best I can with my weird thing. Where my weird thing is. And God's like, I need your weird thing. That weird thing is what I'm going to use, and you're going to beat down the gates of hell with it using that weird thing. And in the process, you're going to find fulfillment and purpose, and you're going to accomplish all God has for you right in the middle of it. Listen to me. Don't give up when you're feeling overwhelmed and tired with those kids, with the financial burden, with the addiction. Don't give up. Stay in the fight and trust that everything he's given you, what you've got right now, as little as it may feel, as under-resourced in energy or emotion or whatever it is you think you need more of, Trust that he's given you everything you need right now to accomplish what he's called you to do. And you have a destiny and purpose. And even if you stand there like a fool with a pool noodle, you can do this. You guys receive that? Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you so much that you have given everything we need for life of righteousness and godliness in you. I pray for those this morning, man, they're ready to throw in the towel. Lord, I just pray over them. Let us not grow weary in doing good for we will reap a harvest at the right time if we don't give up. So I thank you, Lord, that we, man, whatever's coming at us, we can be confident, Lord, that somewhere in the middle of it, you're making us stronger. You are making us strong in your strength. It's not in our strength, in our weakness. Lord, you are strong. And I pray that we would learn to just depend more and more on that strength that you offer us because it is infinite strength. It's all power. And it's flowing the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is living in us and he will give life to our mortal bodies. If you're here this morning, you've not given your life to Jesus. I'm gonna say a prayer in just a second. And if you say this prayer and you mean it in your heart, God is gonna come and forgive your sin. He's gonna transfer you out of the kingdom of darkness and set you up with him in the kingdom of light. And it starts when we say this prayer. Let's all say it together. Lord Jesus, we repent of our sin. We turn from our way. We turn to your way. Help us walk in your truth. Amen. Hey, if you just said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. We got some resources for you back there under the do it again sign. A couple quick announcements. Next week, this service, starting on September 1st, will be starting at 1115. So based on today's attendance, you guys just show up at your normal time. And you'll be right on time, right? You won't miss any of the music. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, second thing, we're going to start a series next week called Live Wise. It's based on the book of Proverbs. And here's what I want to give you an opportunity to do, but this is really cool, okay? I want you to start reading through the book of Proverbs. It's right in the middle of the Bible. Book of Proverbs, one proverb, like Proverbs 1, read it on September 1st. Men, this is a great opportunity for you to step up and lead your family spiritually. And they're going to fight and push back. We don't have time. Find a time where you can read through 
Proverbs. September 1st, read Proverbs 1. September 2nd, read Proverbs 2. We're going to start that next week. And then finally, do not forget to head out and go to uh, the pavilion out there, the gathering place, and sign up for a small group. One last little thing. I send out a month, um, every Monday I send out a short encouraging email with stuff like I talked about today. If you want to be signed up for that, you just scan this QR code. It'll pop up the, the website, put in your email address and hit send and you will be signed up for that. You guys be blessed. Next, tomorrow morning when life hits you in the face, stand up straight and go, man, I got what I need. I can do this. Amen. Be blessed. You're dismissed. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.